and thank you for joining us for a demonstration of some new tools that can help enable end-to-end -end causal inference at scale. I'm Eleanor Dillon. I'm part of the ALICE team at Microsoft Research New England, where we've developed the EconML toolkit. And I'm joined by Amit Sharma at Microsoft Research India and the co-creator of the DoY toolkit. So today we want to talk a little bit about these two Python toolkits that we've developed and how they can help use causal machine learning and the latest techniques for large-scale data. Then we'll spend some time digging deeper into a specific use case of how you'd use these tool to, two toolkits in practice. Many of the early advances in machine learning were really designed to think about prediction problems. When we use prediction models, we're making an implicit assumption that things will basically continue as they have been. So the relationships between data features that we're using to predict many features into one outcome will hold in the future, and that prediction will remain valid. When we think about changing our behavior, that assumption of prediction models is violated. So when we want to think about what would happen if we changed behavior, we need to use a different set of causal models. Prediction models can give us really misleading answers to these questions, because the feature that is the best predictor may not have a direct causal effect. For example, past sales may be a good predictor of future sales, but if we did something to artificially inflate sales today, we wouldn't necessarily expect that sales would increase a lot in the future. It turns out that many business relevant questions that data scientists are thinking about are really better served by causal models rather than prediction models. A-B experiments are the standard way to think about answering a causal question. So if I change an algorithm, would it lead to a higher success rate? But lots of policy decisions are also really driven by causal questions. If we adopt this new treatment and policy, how will it lead to a change in outcomes, maybe a healthier patient, more revenue for a business. We can also use this to think about the changes we've made in the past. Knowing what I do now and the way that outcomes changed, did my policy really help or hurt what I was trying to change? We can also think about attributing credit to many different interventions that we've made in the past. Are people buying more of a product because of my recommendation algorithm? Would they have bought anyway? Was there something else that affected their choice? So we know that it's important to think about things in a causal way sometimes instead of a prediction, but it's often difficult to figure out how to do that in practice. So there's two fundamental challenges in causal inference. One is that even more than prediction problems, the validity of causal analysis always depends on assumptions. So data is not enough. We really need to be clear about what we believe relationships will be. Because of this, uh, causal inference has traditionally been the domain of specialists like economists who are practiced in developing and articulating these assumptions. However, data sets have also become increasingly high dimensional and large. A lot of traditional economic techniques for causal inference built in very strong assumptions to use simple transparent models that worked with limited data. Our new capacities with machine learning and large data sets allow us to relax some of those assumptions, but it means that models become increasingly transparent, uh, non-transparent and difficult to interpret and evaluate. EconML and DoY can help with both of these challenges, both to help articulate assumptions clearly and understand our results and to implement increasingly complex economic models with more realistic assumptions. DoY and EconML are two Python packages that help bring causal inference to a wider audience away from specialists and economists. They implement the latest in causal machine learning models which have flexible, minimal assumptions and help to make those assumptions more transparent for users. A unified API brings together many of these latest tools. Some of them we've developed in-house as part of Microsoft Research, but we've also programmed up 
the advances in academia and from many other sources. Finally, we put them in a familiar interface that's built on standard Python packages that most data scientists are already familiar with to enable implementing of these complex models with only a few command lines. No toolkit can remove any domain expertise and uh, human input in causal reasoning. But the traditional process required a decision maker with domain knowledge and expertise to frame the question, and then specialists like economists to choose an appropriate model, fit the assumptions to the model, implement the model, and then interpret the results. DOI and EconML can't remove that first step where you need a decision maker with domain expertise to frame the question, but they can make those second and third steps simpler. So I'm now going to turn this over to my colleague Amit to talk a little bit more about how these toolkits work in practice. Thank you, Eleanor. Now I'll go deeper into each step of causal inference and show how these libraries can help you uh, conduct a causal analysis. Uh, as Eleanor mentioned, there are three steps, uh, framing of the causal question, then estimation of the causal effect, and then finally evaluation of how your good your causal estimate is. And as we'll see, because domain expertise and assumptions are so important, uh, evaluation also becomes an important part. So in the first step, the framing, uh, it is important to articulate the assumptions formally and also formulate the current causal estimate. Both of the steps can be done using do why. So here we are transferring the domain experts knowledge into a formal framework. So this helps one in helping them transparently establish what are the assumptions. And it also helps in sharing those assumptions with other people and getting uh, reviews. The second step, once you have figured out, this is my causal question, and these are the methods that are allowed to be estimated uh, on that causal question. Uh, now comes the, uh, the answer of estimation. So here we often have high dimensional data and we also may be interested in the treatment effect on a particular set of people or a small set of people. And so here we need cutting edge personalized causal inference tools uh, that EconML provides. Uh, this is based on recent and research that we and others have done. Uh, and with this tool, uh, you get a battery of different estimators that you can use for your problem and compare them. And finally, uh, the question is of evaluation. Uh, so now you may want to know uh, how good is your estimate? And also you may want to understand what is the model doing, right? And so here you get interpretability and presentation of causal effects in a visual way as well as ways to test your assumptions and test the validity of your estimate itself. In the next three slides, I'll talk about each of these problems and how our solution helps you uh, do this in a methodological way. So first, uh, for any kind of causal problem, uh, a causal graph is a well-established way of expressing your assumptions, and that's exactly what our toolkit helps you do. Uh, so as I'm showing you an example here, uh, as a domain expert, you can enter the variables that you're interested in. What's the treatment? What's the outcome? What causal effect is interesting to you? And then also say how other variables are affecting it, right? And the power of do calculus and a lot of causal inference work that has been done in the past decade now helps us kind of automatically figure out first if the causal effect is identifiable, which means given even infinite data, can you find out the causal effect? And second, it also tells you which are the methods that you can use for your problem. So I've just written a couple of them here. Uh, automatically based on the graph, our library can tell you whether the backdoor criterion, front door, instrumental variables, mediation, and so on, which ones are applicable for your specific problem. Once you have that information, uh, you would now want to know how can I estimate the causal effect and here you get the finite data issues, right? So now you have to think about what kinds of 
uh, data set you have, what are the dimensions of the features that you have to control for, uh, and also who, on whom do you want to estimate the effect, right? And so here we provide you multiple options uh, so that you can find the best method that may apply for your particular data set. Uh, if it's just average treatment effect that you're interested in, uh, you may look at simple methods like matching or stratification or propensity-based uh, scoring. Uh, these methods have the benefit that they are interpretable and very easy to use. Uh, but often you'll find in a situation where you have high dimensional data and so advanced machine learning methods are needed there. Uh, this is also true especially if you want to find out conditional treatment effects for specific populations. Uh, so here we provide uh, some of the most recent research methods, for example, double ML, orthogonal random forests, uh, meta learners intend to treat uh, DRIVs, and many more methods that you can look at. And the goal there is to uh, help you have one library which has all the methods available so that they're easily swappable and also easily comparable for a particular problem. And this brings us to the last part of causal inference, which is how do you interpret and evaluate the robustness of an estimate? Because remember, we don't have cross-validation or something simple as you have in predictive models, where you can immediately know how good your model is. And so here you need a multi-pronged approach to look at what the model is doing and inspect that with the domain knowledge that you have. So we would first want to interpret the estimate, uh, interpret the role of confounders in driving treatment and outcome with SHAP. And we'd also want to look at the personalized treatment effects and our libraries provide a tree interpreter for you to look at the policy and how it's doing for different sets of people. On the robustness side, we would want to test whether the assumptions we made were actually true. Uh, so partly we want to see whether the data itself satisfies those assumptions. And second, we would also want to create some simulated data where we know the causal assumptions and check how our estimator is doing. So one quick example I'm showing you here in the graph is imagine that you have a treatment and an outcome and a confounder that you need to condition on. We can create an alternative universe where there's a placebo treatment, which means this treatment is completely randomly generated. And now we give the same data set, this new data set, sorry, to the estimator, right? And the goal is that now the estimator should definitely return zero as the treatment effect because we have completely randomly generated this treatment value. And so these are ways in which almost like debugging, you can look at the estimate and check how good it is for your problem. With that, we'll now switch into a case study. Uh, this would be a obvious way of showing uh, how our libraries work, and this would also give you a hands-on experience. Uh, what Eleanor and I will do now is that we'll take you through this case study together uh, and show the capabilities of these libraries. So our problem is customer segmentation. Uh, imagine a media company. Uh, this is a very common problem. They want to s offer discounts, but they want to target discounts to customers, right? Uh, and here it's very difficult to do experiments and A-B tests, so they prefer to use their large historical data. Two questions they want to ask. First, what is the causal effect of these discounts on demand? And second, which customers are more responsive to discounts? Uh, with the first, they gain a knowledge about their customers and their system. But the second one is interesting because they can now also create policies and decide how to uh, allocate their discounts to customers. Okay, so let's just dive in. Let's see how these libraries can help. Uh, before that, a bit of setup. Uh, we are here using simulated data. Uh, the reason is that with simulated data, we know the true causal effect and we can benchmark the estimates that we get. But of course, in a real world scenario, you would not have uh, this data simulated and you would not know the true effect. Therefore, uh, things like refutations and interpretation would be important. Uh, we have the standard data here. Uh, just to give you a sense, we have the user's account age, uh, their age, average hours they spend online, uh, their friends, if they have membership or not, uh, the songs they've purchased, their income, and so on. And so this is usually you can think of as a user profile and their activity uh, that we have access to. And the question would be, what would be the causal effect, right? So the first problem is framing. 
Uh, and here's where you can use Tuvi to input your assumptions and you are given back a graph that interprets and shows you what assumptions you're making about the problem, right? So what we are showing in the first step is that you're initializing a Kate estimator saying that I would like to use a method called linear DML. Uh, and you're also saying that you want to actually estimate uh, the causal effect. Then you can use do y to actually visualize the causal pathways and also specify now which variables are what, right? So what's the treatment? What's the outcome? And also what are the confounders? So these are variables that you would like to control on. In the second step, uh, you would now want to know which estimation methods are applicable, right? So this is, uh, in this case, we already chose with the linear uh, DML model, uh, but you might want to know, first of all, if that's a good choice. And second, maybe you are, there are other methods that you can use which would be more beneficial for your problem. Uh, so what we do here is that uh, we are using two calculus to find out whether backdoor is applicable or whether instrumental variables are applicable and so on. And as you can see, this library automatically tells you that estimate one backdoor is applicable. So now we can talk a little bit about understanding the variation and the personalization and the causal effects. So for the first step that Amit presented, we use linear DML, which imposes some assumptions on the relationship between the treatment, the price in this case, and the outcome, the sales. The advantage of imposing that assumption is that it can make estimates a bit faster and uh, more precise because you're adding your knowledge. But if that knowledge is incorrect, if it's not a linear relationship, you might want to use an estimator that we do here, like a causal forest which allows uh, a free relationship between the treatment and the outcome. So here we've estimated our causal forest, and then we've plotted the estimated effect in blue over the true effect, which we know in this simulation in orange. And you can see that we find a very good relationship between the uh, both income, which we think affects how price will affect sales and the relationship between price and sales. So our estimated effect is uh, more, more negative, which in this case means that when you raise the price more, you decrease sales more for lower income and a smaller effect for higher income. And our estimates match the true effect very well. If we did not have the true data, and the simulation, we would now also want to check whether our estimate is good, right? Uh, and one of the examples I'm showing here is that of the placebo refuter uh, that we just talked about. And so what your code is doing here is that it's saying, I have the estimate and I have my data set, but I now just want to simulate a slightly different data set where the treatment is replaced by a completely Gaussian random variable, right? And that's exactly what this test does. And your expectation is that the method should return zero as the treatment effect. If it does not, we give you uh, a p-value here to let you know when this test has detected some problem with your method. And you may want to go back and change some assumptions. Uh, luckily, in this case, as expected, uh, the new effect is very close to zero. And the p-value is about 0 0.05. So we can conclude that at least this test uh, uh, is OK. One thing I want to highlight is that we cannot prove that the estimate is correct using these checks. But what we do is that we provide you a bunch of such checks so that at least you can go through and weed out any of the bad estimators that you may have. So finally, now that we have our personalized causal effects and we feel reasonably confident about the assumptions that we use to make this model, we may want to take another step to take our personalized causal estimates and turn them into policies that we can implement. If we had a lot of features that we thought might influence the responsiveness of demand to prices, we might use a tree to highlight which of those features were the most important. In this case, we think income is the only important feature that drives how responsive users are to changes in price. So here we use uh, a tree policy interpreter from EconML to create a rule. In this case, 
it finds that we should divide our sample from income less than one and greater than one in the simulated data. And you can see that for these relatively low-income users, there's a large average treatment effect uh, that, again, is negative, showing that they buy less when the price is high. For the sample that's higher income, the average Kate is much smaller and closer to zero. So you can see that if you implement this suggested policy and target the discount only at those users that have the highest responsiveness to changes in price, you have higher revenue than if you give everyone a discount or if you give no one a discount. So using these toolkits can improve your outcome by targeting your discounts to the right customers. This notebook is available on the EconML uh, GitHub account, and you can also browse many more notebooks on both DoWai and EconML's GitHub. Uh, we'd love for you to check out uh, the documents and give us feedback. Uh, these are open source libraries. Uh, we would also love your contributions. Uh, for more information, you can check out the links below. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Uh, of course, do why in EconML are the result of a collaborative effort of a larger team. Uh, you can reach out to any of us uh, for comments and feedback. Thank you.